when you look at where South Africa is, I mean, it's a, I think it's a pertinent discussion because I keep asking the question, you know, South Africa has followed economic ortho orthodoxy ever since the dawn of democracy, right. and it hasn't gotten us anywhere. I remember we missed the first commodity boom. By the time the, the, the country woke up to it, it was gone. The second cycle of that commodities boom has come, and again, it's almost leaving us as South Africa is in a recession. And you have to say, you have to ask the models that we are following. So you give us an assessment of where we are and uh, how perhaps we can get ahead. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a really fantastic question. And, and uh, let me start with this. If, if you are an economist, outside economist, and you come to South Africa, you came to South Africa a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You quickly if you realize from Mars and you came into yes. South Africa, let's put it that way. <laughs> and you quickly realize there is something uh, not right. The, um, it, the you you find out that the at the time that the economy is in recession, and the unemployment rate has increased yeah. to twenty seven point five percent. Yes. Uh, the the Treasury announces a austerity plan for the next three years. Yes. The Reserve Bank is the threatening Reserve Bank to increase interest rates. Increase the interest rate. Yes. So you realize that there is a major disconnect between economic policy yeah. framework or, uh, that is in implemented and the need of the economy for growth and employment. Now, if you have been around and uh, South African economy and policy and uh, uh, observe that, you realize, well, that's actually not new, as sure. you said. Yes. This has been going on for more than 20 years. Yes. We have an MTF that is in place that year after year provides austerity, is austerity driven. Yes. And you have a reserve bank that is basically used as a very narrow uh, mandate yeah. in monetary policy. Both of them end up having short-termism as their focus, yeah. even though the economy keeps planning long-term yeah. growth, yeah. employment, poverty reduction. glad you mentioned it yourself. I didn't say a word about it, but <laughs> go on. <laughs> so yes. you realize there's a problem. You realize there's in other words, if I were to rephrase this question, I would put it this way. South Africa is following the wrong economic model for its kind and set of problems. Yes. I think that is, so what we, d what we do in our institution where we have economic models of the economy, yeah. uh, we say, well, what if the economy continues on this path? Yeah. This 22 years goes yeah. for another 10 years. We yeah. have to, what would be the outlook? Yes. Would it provide that 5% growth? And, that and the uh, government is looking for? And you realize it doesn't. It hasn't delivered that sustainable growth in the yeah. past. It yeah. hasn't delivered sustained decline in unemployment rate. Yeah. And you realize that when you simulate it forward, yeah. it also will not deliver the 5% growth, it will not reduce the unemployment to yeah. single digit yeah. or eradicate yeah. poverty. Yeah. 100%. Which brings you to the to point that you say, well, what needs to be done? Absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely. And I see it very deftly, very diplomatically, you have uh, sidestepped my question, which is fine. I perfectly understand it because mm -hmm. we are going to be accusing the government of following the wrong economic model here. But I am certainly accusing it of the same. So you tell me, what should South Africa be doing? What should South Africa tweak in order to get it onto the right economic uh, growth trajectory? Well, I think the, um, what you mentioned there is that the macroeconomic policy needs, I, I would say, needs to be revisited. The, the MTF program of austerity program needs to be brought in in line with a growth-oriented type of uh, economic ma uh, fiscal policy right. that is in line with like achieving those higher five six percent growth rate we have an economy that has really the demand in it has shrank significantly from household consumption mm -hmm. that has you know the, the a average annual growth rate now is half of what it was earlier before 2008 right investment average annual growth rate is one-tenth of before it was 0.8% annual growth rate as opposed to 6.6%. Mm. Even how f government consumption expenditure has yeah. declined in real terms. Yeah. So we have, a, we have an economy that this persistent uh, pressure on demand yeah. has really uh, reduced its productive capacity. Right. And that needs to be re-looked at and looked at the fiscal side to yeah. bring the from the austerity yeah. approach yeah. to growth yeah. and try to get the debt GDP ratio, manage it yeah. to 
increase growth, not yeah. through cuts in expenditure. But what is the growth? When you say to, to change it from austerity to growth, what do you mean? What does the government have to do? If you really look at that, then, then for example, we have a major needs on, on if you look at foreign, uh, uh, public investment, for example. Yeah. Uh, both public corporations and, 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 and government uh, investment. Yeah. These can be at much higher rate uh, over the next 10 years in a consistent manner. If you look at right now over the last 10 years and you look at in real terms how much public investment has increased, it has been minimal. Mm -hmm. Even though in, in nominal terms we have talked about yeah, its growth, yeah, yeah. but in real terms which makes the difference yeah. in the economy, in yeah. the economy growth, it it's hasn't been happening. seen. Because we're continuously holding back because of the our targets on the uh, deficits and, and the, 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 the debt ceiling, ceiling exactly. expenditure, yes. etc. Et That's uh, on the fiscal the side. The same from the monetary policy side. Yes. If you look at, for example, interest rate, the interest rate policy of the uh, Reserve Bank, yeah. which is basically a knee-jerk reaction to, in, to inflation, uh, threat from inflation. Yeah. It is the, 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 the banking sector is a main proponent of it, but the small, medium-sized enterprises, they do not like that policy. Manufacturing sector do not like that policy. Sure. The, the household sector, whether it is for purchasing houses or durable goods and others, yeah. do not like the high interest rate policy. So these are, uh, on, on from the interest rate policy side, or from the credit extension. We have an economy that has actually gone down in terms of the growth of credit extension to, p to small, medium-sized enterprises, to, right. other, to, uh, to households and to b businesses yeah. in order to help growth. Yeah. So that yeah. simulations that we do on the model allow us to do these what-if scenarios yeah. and see the potential of any of these measures yeah. in terms of helping achieving there was higher growth and yeah. higher employment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like you're saying the inflation, inflation targeting regime is inappropriate for a developing country like South Africa. Yes, I think it is. it has been a problematic since the beginning. Yeah. I don't think it was ever justified, provided a, a strong justification for it, let alone the, the, the bound that it was put 3 to 6% were never justified in terms of why 3 to 6%. It should be that, yeah. And, 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 and then the bigger issue is that why not focuses also not only on inflation but on but growth on or growth. on unemployment. 100%. Um, what would be appropriate if you were to have an inflation targeting regime as a way of anchoring inflation expectations as the Zebling says it is uh, uh, trying to do? If the inflation targeting has to stay, you say, if, if it has yes. to stay, it definitely has to, its bound has to change. I mean, what I read uh, recently is that the, the Reserve Bank is even looking at 6% it's higher bound as being too high. Yes. It's now targeting about 4.9% yeah. or, or inclined to that. Yeah. So we're even getting even more we're restrict. We're getting squeezed, yeah. And, and that means that they are less and less, is, uh, I think the implication of that yeah. for, the com for the real economy sure. is not being you know, looked at. So in your view, what would be appropriate? To tie in the inflation and targeting to growth or to, give the, to expand the mandate of the Reserve Bank so that it not, it only, it not only looks at uh, 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 inflation, but it also looks at growth. I think ultimately it should change for a developing country yeah. to, to, to a dual mandate yeah. that will be concerned about inflation, but also concerned about growth, or some people say to uh, concern about employment. Right. Uh, so either of those, but not to have only inflation as the only... Yeah. Uh, Are there uh, examples that we could follow? Yes, in the US, actually very interesting. In the US, the, the, the previous Federal Reserve Bank governor Bernanke, who was the architect of the inflation targeting. When he became a reserve, uh, the uh, Federal Reserve Governor during after 2008, yeah. he flooded the economy with yeah. money, yeah. trillions of dollars, yeah. completely the opposite of what, the, because the focus was we got to create yeah. jobs. And yeah. as a result, yeah. over the last 10 years, yeah. South African economy uh, yeah. unemployment has gone from 21.5 to 27.5 percent. Yeah. US Unemployment rate has gone from 10% to yeah. 4%. And I can also add that South African growth has been middling around 1% and we've been That's going right. nowhere. When you factor in uh, population growth, you can see where we're going. Okay. Unfortunately, I do not have enough time to be able to talk to you. But I just wanted to ask you quickly, have you had a call from the president or perhaps, you know, send a call to the president? We are available anytime for his call. Thank <laughs> you, sir. Thank Dr. you very much. Aska Adelzada, he is Director and Chief Economic Modeler at AD. RS.